Thank you. So, uh, myself, Avuji Chatterjee, I am working in SIDAC, Kolkata uh, for the past 20 years, and uh, I'm now in the information security uh, or cyber security field for the past four, five years I was working, mainly as a web uh, application security auditor and uh, IT network infrastructure audit. So, today, uh, uh, the session is on uh, Windows and Linux uh, auditing tool. So basically, we'll be auditing, we'll be trying to learn some tools that will be helpful for auditing our Linux and Windows systems. So basically, the first tool, so this is a hands-on type of uh, presentation uh, where I am not be using any PPT or such, such things, uh, but I'll be showing you the demonstration how the things has to be performed. So the first tool uh, that is coming up uh, as a Windows auditing tool is the Belark Advisor. Okay. So this Belark Advisor can be uh, downloaded from this website, belark.com slash product. So you, or you can type the product name in the Google website and uh, actually the first result that will be hitting, you can hit on that uh, hyperlink and get to that particular URL. Now, this is a free tool for uh, private use, but it cannot be used for any commercial, government, or educational purpose. So, now, what is this Belark uh, Advisor tool? It is It gives a de detailed profile of your installed uh, software and hardware, as well as network in inventory any missing uh, security updates on your machine or Windows uh, Windows box, any antivirus status, if it is at all installed or not, or uh, security benchmarks and uh, displays the output in a very useful format in the web browser. So let's uh, start up the tool and see what is the output of this uh, tool. Actually, I'll be running this, this, this tool uh, is mainly helpful for a desktop type of audit means uh, where uh, a machine is not uh, typically connected to a network, you can stand, you can download it in a standalone machine and you can perform a run the tool and give you and get the output of the thing. So you can have a whole snapshot of what is the status of your Windows environment so that you can patch up uh, as required. If any vulnerability or threat is there, you can, or any, outdated version of your software uh, hardware uh, hardware uh, components or drivers are there you can update them uh, uh, at the same time and later run the tool again to find out that those things are resolved or not so let's start and fire up the tool okay are you are you able to see my screen everybody yes, sir. okay okay so once the tool is installed, we have a desktop icon that has been installed by default. Okay, or we can go up uh, to the start menu and fire up the tool name. So here is the tool I'm running. So here is a, a user, con user account confirmation message. So I can click on the continue button. And since this tool uh, requires an administrative privilege, it will be asking for my uh, permission to run the app. So once I run the tool, it will be fetching the latest databases and updates from the server. And uh, I will obviously give a permission to that so that uh, all the current uh, threats and vulnerability databases are updated for my software. And uh, next time, so it is saying that your version uh, 2021.15.2 was updated to the uh, certain version. It is updated to 25.1 version. So the latest definition is now in my machine. So I'll click OK to run the tool. And the, but the analysis thing will be stored or the report that is being given by this uh, tool 
will be stored in a particular web directory. I'll be going to that web directory. By default, it, the software is installed in this program files. Uh, 386 means it is a 32 bit uh, uh, version of the program files folder. Here, the Baylor folder is there. So obviously, I'll be going into that folder. And there is a system folder within it. There is a temp folder. So here, my output will be generated or by report of my machine while running the tool or the output will be generated. So let's come back. Yeah. It is still running in the background. So it will take uh, one or two minutes time. So next we can have a HTML format of the report and we can browse the report so that we can see the vulnerabilities and the uh, configurations of my software and hardware of, of the current local machine I'm running the tool. It is checking uh, for all the software, hardware, and the uh, network connectivities. Uh, checking all the network informations. It is trying to fetch the network informations from it. So please hold a bit. Meanwhile, you can ask questions related, related to the tool or any any uh, relevant question uh, relating to the topic. So I can answer in between while we are uh, having the demonstration. This tool is taking a bit uh, larger, uh, longer time, but uh, other tools will not be taking such much, such time. Uh, so uh, we can proceed with that. But uh, this tool will be, giving, will be giving you a comprehensive type of report, which is very good for a novice user as well as an advanced user, expert user, who can uh, gain knowledge from it. Uh, what, what are the components and all? What are the services running? What are the security patches that has been applied here? Uh, and also a security benchmark type of thing. So basically, Somebody has asked question in Hindi. Can uh, uh, can I can anybody help me with, to translate this thing in English? Rather, okay. So here is the report. Uh, I am just going to that temporary folder. You can just see that uh, two files have been generated. One is a comprehensive type of uh, report, and one is a summary type of report and it has been fired in the default browser setting now let us see so this is the summary report system security status there is no security benchmark score is unavailable to us virus protection is up to date means all the virus definition files are uh, good working up there are three security patches security updates missing that is the most important thing that we need to take care of so uh, we can click on the particular thing and go to that, jump to that particular section uh, to see the updates. Uh, we'll rather, we'll scroll down one by one to see the output. So here, the first thing that is, it is the computer profile summary. The computer name has been displayed as, as it is been set while installation. The profile date, advisor version we are using, the Windows login name, and uh, here is the operating system details that uh, I'm using a Windows 10 professional version, build this uh, language, system local installed. Okay. This is the system model I'm using. It is a HP Z2 uh, workstation Z4 uh, 
G4 workstation with serial number, asset tags, and all other details. Here is the processor details, 3.2 gigahertz Intel Core processor, the i7 processor uh, with the uh, internal cache memory and all. And uh, this is the main circuit board, the architecture or the details of the circuit, main motherboard layout with their serial numbers and all. These are the hard disks that are being connect, uh, currently connected to my machine along with the virtual disks, if any. These are the memory modules. Everything is given in details. What are the hard disk partitions available in this local machine? What is the status of the total disk capacity with the free space? What are the local users? This is also a very important thing to think for the security aspect. Either we have to check that the guest, uh, uh, well, what to say, the guest uh, user should be always disabled. It should not be enabled for security purpose. It is a, it is a, it is from a checklist type of thing that we do check. This this uh, guest user is enabled or disabled. It is, it is, uh, it should be disabled at all time. Okay. And this is a specific special type of WDAG utility account that is only available in a Windows 10 machine. This user is not available in prior versions of Windows. Uh, these are the printer informations that are connected. This is the mounted, if any network drives are mounted in my machine, means I have mapped some network uh, folder and I have mapped it as a local drive in my machine that will also show up with the URL any controller or bus information, then display information, multimedia information, these, the virus uh, protection information, because it is a Windows 10 machine, by default, Windows Defender is in, enabled and it is always running in the background to uh, help secure my system. Then uh, these are the communication channels. Rather, these are the adapters or the interfaces that are available, few are, uh, related to the physical Ethernet ports and some are for the virtualization things. Some uh, ports are for virtual ports. Means uh, when I have installed a virtual, huh? virtual machine, when I have installed a virtual machine, some uh, additional adapters are also installed as a part of the communication adapter. These are the other devices that have been installed in my machine. These are the history of the USB storage for the past 30 days, any activity that I have done, what are the following pen drives I have installed or plugged or unplugged in my machine. They, they, they with their serial numbers are also be. These are used for forensic purposes also, means forensic detection. And here is the network map of my machine, what printer or what machines are connected, what are their IP addresses, they are connected from time to time, means any machine that I have tried to connect or uh, that are accessible from my current machine, though network devices are being listed. So you can have an overview of the network devices that is current in my sub network, in my current sub network. You can see that all the network IP addresses are in the series of uh, 10 to 48 series. So these are the machines in my current sub network in my environment where I have run the tool. Now, this is the most important thing, the missing security updates. They apply for Java, Apple, uh, Microsoft and more uh, patches. These are the th three uh, security vulnerabilities that has been found in my machine. Uh, in your case, other uh, missing updates may come up. Uh, likewise, that uh, you, can, you may have, you may be uh, having a security update from Microsoft Home Windows, which you have not you know, installed it. Maybe you have uh, disabled your uh, automatic update of your Windows machine. So the, those uh, updates or warnings should be coming here, missing, as missing things. Uh, you may be having a Java, if you are having a JDK with your machine, 
so that java virtual machine may be having an update that you have not installed yet so that those things will be listed here so in my case it is only the three things that are the severity is the end of life means the support for these three uh, components have are no are no, no more given by the vendor so there is no way to mitigate or to correct these uh, three security okay. warnings so what what can be done we can replace these things with other uh, alternate components or uh, alternate versions means uh, one example i can give you this is the thing it is having a microsoft 2007 vulnerability and no security updates are provided by the vendor that means i in order to correct this uh, uh, security issue i need to install a newer version of microsoft win office which will be having which is currently having a support with microsoft products so uh, then only i can get the regular updates and this uh, entry will not come up in my report so since i'm habituated to use a particular version of office um, in my it is my uh, favorite version that's why i have kept this version but i in order to mitigate or to nullify this uh, security issue i need to install a latest version of windows where support is also available so once i uh, update my of microsoft office regularly that uh, entry will not come up as a vulnerability or security issue so you get my point and for any other thing how to mitigate here you have you are you have been given a hyperlink where we can visit that particular hyperlink and that page will show you how to correct the issue in my case i have clicked on the microsoft link let's see what they have say so it has it is saying that uh, the product is end of support I can use a different one. This particular version of Flash Player that is installed in my machine through my browser, this is also outdated. So the mitigation steps are, will be given here. So I need to update that uh, particular version or I need to replace a, that uh, particular software with an alternative thing. That is the gist of the thing. So this, uh, this security, things should not be coming here. So to have an ideal uh, secure system, this the minimum number of security uh, updates that have been shown in the report should be minimal. Now, after that thing, the software licenses means all the sort of, uh, actual license software that have been installed here. Uh, so the version of each one is being displayed. These are also done for auditing purposes to verify that a legitimate software or a illegal software is installed or not. And these are the software version and usage. Every component, every software that is installed in my machine, they are shown with the particular version number and which 32-bit system or a 64-bit version is installed. They are all being displayed here. So these are the Microsoft hotfixes because I'm using a legitimate version of the Windows operating system. All the hotfixes or the patches that regularly Microsoft people, they push into a system. Uh, they are being shown here. So we can have a total uh, overview of the uh, system updates that are happening in my machine from time to time. So along with the install date, on which date that particular security update has been installed or not. So here also you, you, you are given a index type of thing where you can directly jump to a particular section and click on that to give the particular section. These are basically anchor tags where when we click on the anchor tag, the particular section will show up. So now we can use this web, uh, what to say, this uh, report to audit your 
system based on some uh, laid out guidelines that we use and we check out for the vulnerabilities found in the particular machine and report it to the client for mitigation. That is the first step. Uh, this is the first tool I have shown. Now, uh, can I move to the next tool? The next tool is uh, WinAudit. It is also a freeware type of software. It is an inventory utility for Windows computers. Uh, let me start the application. Or we can go. It can also be started from the desktop icon, or we can go to the particular uh, start menu and search. Okay. So uh, I think this software is not there. So I can download it. It's a small bit of a software that we can instantly download and run it. Here is the download link. So it is coming in a single uh, executable file. Now we can start the, uh, we can run the software and it will start collecting all the informations related to the machine on a runtime basis. And here we'll, we, in the left pane, we can see that the categories it is trying to find out. And all as, as, as and when the scan progresses, we'll, we'll see that the left-hand portion will be populated with others. Uh, sections, subsections, where detailed information can be faced or displayed. So this mean audit it is basically, it is a inventory utility for Windows computer. It has a comprehensive report on a machine's configuration, hardware and software. It is free and open source. From this software also, we can uh, just uh, log a report. We can generate a report. I will show you how to save a report so that we can be using it for uh, audit purpose, for checking and uh, against a list of checklists. We have a list of checklists where, uh, where the things that has to be done are uh, plotted or uh, jotted down. So we need to check that uh, checklist with the actual findings of the tool result. So we can click on the a particular left tab uh, information to see the system overview. This is the system overview, just like we have found the thing in uh, Bellark. Here also the same information has been displayed here in a different format. And uh, here we have the installed softwares list, the .NET framework version, these are installed or not. If it is installed, it will be shown here. So it's still fetching in the things in the background. So this is the operating system, Windows 10 Pro. This is the peripheral devices that are, that are uh, found to be configured in my machine. So this number of printers, they are configured in my machine. Some are network printers. One or two are uh, software applications extension of the software application like Microsoft Print to PDF and others. This is the security tab where we can have all the details of the security subsections. It's permissions for each component. Registry security. These are the uh, these are the registry values that are being found in my machine. So we need to check with the allowed or the uh, ideal value 
that has to be present in this. So if any uh, mismatch is found, so we have to report that particular this key is having a value zero, which it should be value one for the security purposes. Like that. These are the security settings where all the uh, status of the login accounts are being depicted. Administrator account disabled, guest account disabled, rename administrator account, which is renamed to administrator, guest account, uh, Internet Explorer, uh, scripts are allowed, ActiveX is allowed, Zawa is allowed, download files allowed. So all the configurations that have been shared internally to softwares and the operating system are being fetched and being displayed in form of a report. So that we can audit each and every component. We did not uh, go to uh, run each and every application that has been installed in my machine or uh, software. So we can just run this tool, win edit, win audit, and uh, we can fetch a comprehensive report and uh, have a look at it and find out the vulnerabilities present. So this is the giving the details of the system restore. I haven't restored my system since it has been installed. So if so, uh, the thing would have been shown here. If I have restored it in a previous date, the date and all the details will be displayed here. So here we have the privileges, user privileges, rights assigned, policies. This is the Windows firewall setting. The applications that are allowed through the firewall, they are being listed here as an authorized application. These are the groups and the users. These are the group members. I have two users in my machine. One is uh, myself only, and, and the other is the administrator. And the other, other users are all disabled. In the, this is the information of the scheduled tasks. If any cron type of job means uh, scheduled jobs has been uh, for, uh, configured in my machine, they should have been, uh, they would be shown here. So li just like uh, Adobe Acrobat settings, uh, update settings, it will check for any Adobe Acrobat updates task in a particular time when it was last run, what was the result and all. These are all the update jobs. Schedule task means the update jobs that are been running in the background from time to time with a, with a specific uh, timestamp every time, every day, or every week on the, fifth, uh, on the fifth day of the week. At a particular time, it will check for the updates and something like that. Those will be listed under the schedule tasks. Also, we can uh, create our own schedule task and add it so that uh, that thing will also be listed here. This is the uptime statistics means when the, since my machine is running, uh, how many days is it has been running? How uh, what is the uptime? What is the time downtime? These are the environmental settings that are present in my machine. Regional settings, if any. These are all faced from the control panel type of environment, which can be which which you can uh, use and uh, we can see through the control panel. Those all things are being faced here and stored in a just a tabular format for a comprehensive uh, as a comprehensive report. So these are the network informations, net, network sessions, network shares. These are very important. By default, a, every drive has a uh, default share. So uh, we should disable them. A, a, all the drives, 
C, I have C, D, F, G, H, I. These are all the drives in my physical drives in my machine. So they can be accessed only through the admin admin login, but they can be accessed with a dollar sign embedded with it. If it is or at all, it is not shared with others, I can still access the C drive or the D drive with a dollar sign. And if any other uh, user defined or I have created a share of my own, that would also be shown up here. So this is my network details, network adapter details. All the adapters that have been installed here, uh, along with my Ethernet adapter, uh, other virtual uh, virtual adapters are also there. Those are by default installed when we install a uh, virtual machine in my in a, a, any of the machines. So I have a virtual machine installed. So that's why these virtual adapters are being configured are shown in this report. Then this is the list of open ports. The list of ports that are open for communication. There may be TCP ports or UDP ports or IA, ICMP ports. Okay, so these are the ports that are uh, opened in my machine. Port 80 for uh, 135, 443, 445 and likewise. So later we'll be seeing, uh, we'll be having uh, a sense of the NMAP tool or the angry IP tool so where we can also show what are the open ports of a particular machine or a particular network, uh, which ports are uh, being are open or which ports are closed. So this is the list of ports that, uh, that this tool has reported that by my machine has this, has this number of ports open. So we can uh, have a similarity uh, type of thing. We can uh, have the list uh, prov provided by WinAudit, and we can have the uh, list that is provided by Nmap and compare the two so that we can uh, verify that uh, actually the two uh, softwares are giving the result same, same result basically. So actually these ports are open for communication or for uh, what to say for IPC, inter process communication, to talk to each other. Applications also need to talk to each other to in order to run efficiently. So there may be internal inter process communication also along with the physical communication with the network. So these are the routing table entries found in the machine. These are the list of hardware devices audio input output details with all the uh, GUIDs and these are the GUIDs that are actually found in the registry with their device ID. These are all uh, being faced from the registry and displayed here. Cameras, computer, disk drives, DVD-ROM, firmware, HID, imaging devices, and so on. The display capabilities. Uh, what, what is the capacity of the display of my uh, system? The display adapters, actually the display adapter means the uh, card that is installed in my motherboard or the, which is acting as a display adapter. Then installed printers with uh, uh, all the details. Bias version, information of my machine's bias. Okay. 
bias details. System information of bias in uh, the motherboard, 8455 motherboard is there. So the basic uh, hardware in, uh, informations are being faced here. Chassis information, processor, memory controller, everything, every bit and pieces are being faced uh, by this tool and displayed in a nice fashion. Physical disks with the drive ID and all. This is the identifier, name of the, uh, the, the hardware ID of the particular drive. These are the physical drives. Partitions rather, communication port, some are logical ports, these are the logical ports for software, some are hardware ports as well, COM1, COM2, these are hardware ports. Startup programs, what are the programs that are configured in startup? when my Windows system will start, what, which, which, what are the applications that will start in the background? So we can have, uh, we can see here, these are the startup programs. Some are visible, some are invisible. Some are running as a service. These are the services that are running. the drivers and all, along with the software services, application services. These are the list of the running program that are that are being shown here. So these are all the threads of the Chrome application, Chrome browser, you can see, which one is taking how much memory, what is their process ID, what is, what is the memory, amount of memory it is occupying in the, in the uh, temporary RAM. So these are all the other applications or services. Firefox is also running in the background. Some are running for the network services. Some are running as an internal OS service. So when we click on the task manager, we see a list of, list of processes. These basically these processes are shown here in this table. These, these are the OLEDB internal informations, the data sources that are used by the applications or other web servers or any application that are using the ODBC informations. This, uh, some, some services of the, this uh, OLEDB providers, they have been installed as part of the .NET framework, uh, Microsoft framework, or maybe if I am having uh, a skill server running, they will, maybe additional services will be shown up here. Or maybe if I am running MySQL, so other OLEDB provider information should be coming up here. As such, I, I don't have any particular database installed here. So that's why only the .NET type of applications of the OLED by default, the signatures that are provided by the .NET framework, they are only listed here. So now we have gone, um, gone through this tool, and now we can save this comprehensive report in uh, by clicking on the save file button, and we can save it in a, in a CSV format to import it into an Excel type of file or anything, or we can use a rich text format in the form of a document, formatted document, or we can save that in the form of a HTML. We can give a name. My list or something. So maybe we can uh, open this uh, HTML file in a later point of time to analyze.
So uh, I'll be going to the next tool. So I hope that uh, you have a, a bit of understanding of the Win audit freeware that I have shown you just now. So let's try to open the file that I have uh, just saved as a report. I can open it uh, with Pro. Or you can open with the default uh, application that is uh, being assigned. So here you can see that uh, this is the result. The, uh, the output that has been shown by uh, generated by the Win Audit software. Next, we'll be uh, moving to a tool called Nmap, where it is a particular, it is a network map up type of mapper type of uh, application. So uh, generally we call this Nmap as an Nmap suit, where we have the command line interface or the uh, tool we can, uh, we can run from the command line or it, it comes with a suit also. Suit means uh, it is a collection of tools where Nmap is the primary uh, software, network mapper software that is running along with its uh, GUI that is called ZenMap. Zen map. So here is the ZenMap GUI for the corresponding NMAP tool. Uh, there is a net NCAT uh, tool that is part of, also part of the uh, NMAP uh, family. It is a flexible data transfer, redirectional debugging tool, NCAT. There is also a NDIF tool, a utility for comparing scan results. To, to compare two scan results, we can use the NDIF tool. And we can also use NPing, the packet generation and response tool. So uh, the basic uh, functionality of this NMAP uh, tool is network discovery and security auditing. It performs tasks like network inventory managing, service upgrade schedules, and monitoring hosts or services uptime. That is the most important thing. It is available on a network. What services or application name and version, uh, it will list it. It will give you the operating system and operating system versions. What type of packet filter or the uh, firewall are in use? and such. So mainly we can uh, here, uh, while using the NMAP tool, we have to provide the thing in a simple way. We have to provide the IP address of the particular machine we need to search. So it will, it is trying to run, it is trying to run the NMAP tool on the particular IP address I have specified, uh, 10.240.8.167 or 9.167 maybe, if it is part of my network, obviously. So same, same interface we are getting in the ZenMap thing, Here I have to bypass the firewall. It's, that's why I have to use a PN type of switch. If I provide specific switches with the NMAP tool, so more information will come up, like SV. It will give me the OS versions and all. Now, similarly, if I if I uh, use this uh, NMAP tool in the GUI format, I will just here have to specify the particular IP address. And automatically, you'll see automatically the command uh, command has been compiled for me. 
So here we can have a type of the scan we are intending to run. It's an intent scan. It can be a spin scan as well. When we say a spin scan, the automatically the switch will be changing. So better if you are a new user to Nmap, you can start with using the Genmap uh, GUI tool rather than using the command line. So that will be a better better thing for you to learn the tool faster. So uh, here I'm trying to scan uh, in, uh, perform an intent scan. So to give you the results, so it will show me the list of ports and the uh, ports that are open. For a particular IP only, I will get the ports that are open. Likewise, here you can see that these are the, the posts that have been discovered as open in my machine. It has a 445 TCP port open, 135, 80, 443. The same thing that was reported in the previous tool. Now, after the scan uh, is been complete, we can we can go to these ports and host tab, and we can see the individual section wise report. So till now it is not fetching up, let the scan be completed, then we can see. Yeah, you can see that uh, these are the ports that are open, the green one, and these are the ports that are open in my machine. So uh, I have a list of checklists where uh, it is recommended that the, these such and such ports are, should, should be open, other ports that are not uh, been used or are vulnerable should be closed. So quickly, we are running short of time. We are uh, just shifting to the next uh, tool that is called the angry IP scanner. So here you can uh, provide a range of IPs and you can see what are the, in quick shot, you can see the uh, list of ports open and which hosts, which machine, which sub-network machine is up and which are the, what are the ports exposed in the particular machines. So here is an angry IP scanner. It is also a small type of. So here I'm trying to scan the uh, eight eight series sub network here from 8.0 to 8.255, 10 to 48.0 to 8.255. If the net mask is not known to us then we can uh, just keep it and click the start. Or if it is known to us, we can, uh, uh, we can provide it the slash 24 or slash 23 type of input and click the start button. So it will be analyzing for the 60, oh, so this will take much time. I, I'll reduce the port numbers. Both preferences. I'm searching for all the 65,000. Any port between one to 65,000 will be displayed. So I'm I'm uh, shortening the list. Uh, I am I want to see all the ports that are uh, all the machines that have open ports between one and thousand. And then I click the start button. So 
So upon completion, it will pop up a window or a dialog box will pop up where it will say that a number of total number of hosts alive in the subnetwork is such and the number of ports open as is such. Uh, Abhijit, uh, we are running out of time. Okay. So, uh, so, so, can you give yeah. me a five minutes more? Uh, we have already uh, taken ten minutes more, uh, more than what it is a tea time break. Okay. So, uh, so five minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I've. Uh, since we are running out of time, uh, they let this uh, tool run in the background. I will switch to Linux and I will try to show you one or two tools that are available for Linux auditing. Okay, so I am running here uh, a virtual box to run the Linux platform in an emulated um, environment so that you can all have an essence of that. So uh, one useful, very useful tool for this Linux auditing is Linux. Line is uh, so I'll be using that tool and generate a report and show you how the report looks like. Okay. So here in the download folder, I have uh, I have un uh, unzipped or rather uh, extracted the Linux package tar file. You can go to the Linux uh, Line is website and download this tar .bj tarball and just extract it and just you are ready to run this tool there is an executable called linis so i will be typing linis audit system this is the command to run the tool for auditing purpose It is an interactive type of tool to run this tool in a what to say uninterrupted mode. I have to write quick with a switch quick. It is hyphen hyphen quick. Hyphen hyphen quick. So it is running in the background, it is detecting the OS done. So and the reports will be, uh, I'll, I'll show you the report folder. By default, the report folder is stored in a separate file called linis-report.dat. So the testing is going on. So we can hit enter. Some part of it is interactive, so we cannot skip this. The background, the angry, angry IP here is given the result. No, it is still running. Now the tool has been completed. So here is the location of the report data file, var log. So uh, Kausik sir has uh, told in a previous session that all the important logs are stored in the var log folder. 
So we can go navigate to that folder to see this report. Nine is report dot that all the information that has been, the tool has gathered, they can be uh, now documented. They are found to be documented in this particular file. And if any log or error test report, debug report is there, this will be found in this line is So I'm minimizing the tool. I'm going to that particular folder. Bar. Log. Here is the report that Linus tool has generated. Here you can see all the details of the operating system and uh, the network information. Everything is being properly documented. It performs a healthy scan of your system to support system hardening and compliance. Every configuration is been generated here with all the switches, all the parameters, and all the environmental variables, all the uh, additional software modules that are installed, what is their path, if any cron job is there, their details, any certificate installed, the home directory of particular user, or all, all the default home directories, along with the list of packages that are installed in this machine. This is the extensive report. You can download this report and you can open it into a good editor where uh, you can have this, uh, have the view in a proper formatted way. Now, so this is one tool that I was talking about. Another tool is seen. Abhijit, Abhijit, uh, yes, we sir. have illustrated very long and okay. we cannot go beyond this. Okay. Okay. You have to stop, you just take on questions. Uh, yeah, 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 sure. Take on so tool, tool I can one. just only give one or two tool names so that the users can explore. So another is a CHK rootkit. That is a Linux tool that is available for auditing. And, uh, side by side of Linux, is there, Linus, there, there is another tool called Nix Editor, NIX Auditor. That is also freely available from GitHub. We can compile it and run it to the tool for auditing purposes. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, I suppose this, yeah. We are forcefully stopping this angry IP. So here we can see the, the, these are the total number of hosts scanned. 37 hosts are live and 29 ports are open. So we can sort the output here. And you can see this particular IP, these particular machines have port 22 open. These particular IPs are 23 open. And some machines. They are having multiple ports open, like 21, 23, 80, 443. They are the, uh, do, done purposefully, or they may be unaware, this particular user may be unaware of that some ports are running. So we need to audit and, and notify the user that this uh, unwanted ports should be closed immediately. So thank you. So this gives you an essence how auditing of Windows and Linux systems are done. So I am ready to take up questions. Uh, please continue. Please. Hello, is there any question? Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Naresh, I see. Uh, yeah, third party auditing is possible, sir. So is it completely safe to install this tool? Yes, yes, yes. It is safe. Once you have done your auditing, you can just remove the tool also. 
because these are security tools. These are free from any vulnerabilities. You can scan them through antiviruses and anti-malware uh, applications. They will not be. They will be okay, running fine. How do you generate? Close the ports. We, we, we just shut down the unnecessary services that are helping to open that port. Particular service may be attached with a particular port. So we are in it, if that particular service is not uh, used for your uh, specific knowledge or purpose, then we can close that service automatically the port would be closed. Or we can, uh, uh, we can uh, run a configuration tool so uh, where we will be help guided to and uh, the ports can be closed uh, through that application only. Uh, can you list auditing tools for Linux? Uh, I will be supplying, uh, I have already given one or two names. Uh, I can also give uh, particular names like uh, there is a Tara, Tiger Analytic Research Assistant. Tiger Analytic Research Assistant. It is called Tara. And there is a commercial version of that, Sara, Security Auditor's Research Assistant. Both can be available from arc.com, www-arc.com website. And these two tools, Nix Auditor and uh, Linus, they are free for. Uh, Normal use, I, I can say. The CHK rootkit, it is a rootkit detector. It is also free work. CHK rootkit. These are the tools that are commonly used for Linux auditing. So any more questions? Yeah, yeah. So any any rootkit type of info uh, application or any malware type of application can be running in the background without our knowing so that uh, they can fetch information uh, uh, from us in the background without uh, us knowing. We have no knowledge. So it is advisable to install some antivirus or anti-malware software uh, in our operating system. Uh, on, on top of the operating system so that we can uh, uh, Abhijit, uh, yeah, yeah. Abhijit, we'll we'll have a break now uh, yeah. for around five minutes uh, we'll start at around four o'clock okay uh, you may continue with your question answer session uh, till the time but mm -hmm. others who want to take break may take break for a five minutes and should come back by four o'clock uh, so that can be done that can be done So it's uh, better to install any anti-malware or antivirus or to better use a CHK rootkit type of application where it will search for rootkits and detect it and delete them. It is advisable to uh, stop all the services that are not being required by your system. Many unwanted services are being installed by the OS by default or uh, by any application that we install later on. Many uh, unwanted services and ports are opened for that. So we need to regularly monitor our systems for uh, troubleshooting purposes and uh, for update purposes so that we can uh, have a look with uh, such audit tools and see which ports are open and close them as fast as possible to mitigate the issues. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Registered, uh, there is a cleaner, yeah. Freeware, uh, there are lots of freeware available for registry cleaning. Uh, you have to go, uh, Google it properly, actually. I'll try to show you.
there was a, once upon a time there was a good uh, tool called system mechanic i don't know this is a, there is also a tool called registry mechanic so these are freeware tools uh, yeah yeah here it, it is a good tool they will clean the system uh, registry for you And I would recommend two uh, very important tools. Uh, I just recollected them. So uh, one uh, one of them is Combo Fix. Combo Fix. You go to this first link. Only this first link. Don't go to the other uh, links. You go to this briefing computer link. You download the software. This is a very useful tool. It will uh, just run for the first time. It will reboot your machine. It is a very, and it is uh, daily updated. It means uh, once you run this tool, download and run this tool, next week, if, if you try to run it, it will say it is obsolete. You have to download the latest version every time you uh, run it, intend to run it. So very, very small size, it is 5.4 MB, and only uh, download it from this link. Because other, other uh, vendors, uh, file vendors, they may add some malware to the software also. So this is one tool. This will cure your 80% to 100% of the um, problems that you are facing related to uh, malware or adware or something like that. Another tool, you go to this particular website, means in the same website, you will be having uh, a re recommended tool, list of recommended tools. There you will find another tool name, uh, uh, antivirus, um, anti-malware toolkit, anti-malware toolkit. This one, this is a nice thing. You can download and use this too. Hello. Yeah, and yeah. Now it is the time for next session. Our next uh, presenter is already has joined in. So we'll stop Abhijit and uh, request that.